Hi guys, I'm back. Um, I wanted to do a video today about this notebook. Um, I've been trying to find... This is going to be my new watercolor sketchbook. It's it's 365 uh, days notebook. It's by Stalogy. Um, it's an A5 size. It's 148 millimeters by 100 by 210 millimeters. Um, it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting size. This uh, this right here is a uh, one of those regular moleskins, right? And um, it's got almost an inch on it. Okay, so the reason why I got this is because apparently it's a uh, Hobo Nietzsche kind of knockoff. And Hobo Nietzsche paper is, um, well, Hobo Nietzsche is a book, a Japanese planner, um, but the papers is Tomoe River paper, which is super thin. It's super fountain pen friendly and also watercolor friendly. It does crinkle up just a little bit um, from what I've seen on the videos. I haven't personally had any experience with it. My friend wants to get one really bad, but um, she was telling me about the Hobonichi, and I'm like, ah, oh, what's that? You know, and I tried to look it up and see if it's on Amazon, and it's not. But the first thing that came up was this. So I'm like, well, that how, there's probably a reason for that so I YouTubed it and apparently the paper quality is pretty similar um, Hobo Nietzsche's have a lot of planner aids in there so they'll have like month on two pages year on two pages or six months on two pages da, da, da. a whole bunch of stuff for you to plan your life out but this one um, it has the day weekend month at the top so you can circle it if you want to catalog what day it is and then on the side it'll have one to 24 hours if you want to use this as a planner otherwise there's nothing else there and oh, well, except for the very light gray grid um, so I want to see how it holds up to watercolor today because I want to make this my watercolor sketchbook um, I'm really excited about it I just got it in the mail so let's see Stalogy stands for Stationary Standards and Technology. Um, what should have been is Stalogy. I think that's their mission statement. And then you open it. First thing is you get this, right? And then you get this. I always skip this page because they add a little bit of glue to make it more secure with a binding, but I don't like the way it sits, so I always skip that page. And I always start my books right here. Um, it lays really flat, which I really love. It's because it has that um, Coptic slash kettle stitch. I don't know. It's I think Coptic and kettle stitch are pretty similar. But those kinds of stitches allow the pages to lay really flat. And apparently cop stick, Coptic stitch is one of the earliest forms of book binding in the Western world's book binding canon. I don't know. I watched <laughs> a documentary the other day and I'm like, oh, it's very interesting. So it's been holding to this day. That's how durable it is. So I love that binding. The paper is really nice. It's really see-through. That's the thing I'm kind of worried about. It is thin, so it is see-through which means I'm probably only going to be able to draw or paint on one side of the page and then leave this side alone and not touch it and then go to this side, which would probably cut this whole page, I mean this whole book in half, right? Because they're saying 365 days, but technically it would only be whatever half of that is. Um, 300 would be 150. 65, like 180, 180 something pages, right? Which is still a lot. I mean, you definitely don't get that kind of uh, amount in a mixed media sketchbook. So we'll see. But yeah, 
Um, the other thing that I I had tried before when I was trying to find paper for onion skin was uh, for for fountain pens was onion skin paper, which I found at the paper mill. This also takes watercolor, um, but it crinkles up, and then the paint goes in those little divots that are made by the crinkling up. So it's kind of difficult to do any drawing on it. But um, this is what that looks like. I feel like, oh, because you didn't, you did There. So it has a neat little effect on its own. Um, but yeah, and because it's so thin, it's very see-through. Right. You totally see it on that side. Um, but we're gonna see how this one holds up to it right now. What I did do, and what was my plan the whole time, just to make sure that this stays as flat as possible, um, I got this chipboard. I was gonna try to. Uh, kind of score down one of the edges because it's too thick for the binding and I don't want to mess up the binding. So let me see what I can do about that. This is really thick chipboard. Technically, it's not. I mean, it is chipboard, but it it's from the it's that hard uh, backing on the back of your mixed media sketchbooks. I always keep that um, this because you never know when you might need it. All right. So just put that in there like that. Yeah, it's still kind of, don't want to mess with that binding too much. Let's see here. Where's the... Just going to situate it. Well, it's probably better if I do it that way. Oh, yeah, that's way better. Mm-hmm. Much better. So then, I don't want to get too much of that on there. That should be fine. Just a little piece of the edge, just to keep it down. just square out 
some areas lately. I really don't know what I'm doing, to be honest. Got no clue. We'll just try a few colors out. <sighs> we'll do some watercolor and some gouache. Let's see here. No. Oh, this brush is a little too big for this, I think. I'll go with the, um, probably let's do the smallest one to be honest because I don't want to overdo it here. Oh yeah, this should be big enough for sure. There's one! Let me try autofocus. Autofocus always messes me up. See? You're not. Wow, that dries fast. Huh. Okay, let's do some more. Mm -hmm. Some sap green because why not? Let's do another color. Oh, I like that one. Um, purple love. Let's do some purple love. If you're wondering, these are Windsor and Newton Cotman watercolors. Why? Okay. Windsor and Newton Cotton. I've heard, you know, I've heard some strange reviews about it. Um, personally, uh, I've seen some people say that some of the colors are really hard to uh, get pigment out of. And I bought a couple um, travel sets of the Cotman. I have them in, in my big home palette here. Um, these are all the Cotmans. And I ended up getting a uh, double of some of them, like the Ultramarine and the um, Lemon Yellow Hue. The... Uh, Lycerin Crimson, um, Burnt Sienna, and Yellow Ochre. Those, oh, and Sap Green. So I got double of, and the white, Chinese white. All of those are doubled, but then I got extras of uh, some of these other colors. So just keep them in there, and every single one of them performs absolutely fantastic. I get so, so much pigment out of these. So I don't know. I think, I feel like sometimes Windsor and Newton can have some bad batches. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Let me try some of the old, the old gouache. This is Windsor and Newton designer gouache. Let's put some gouache. 
Um, their red is so weird for the gouache. It looks red, right? It looks red, but watch. Red, pink. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't understand it. It's just the way it is. And the first time I used it, it was like neon. I don't think the camera is really picking it up well. But it's like this intense, vibrant neon pink. And I usually have to mix it with something else if I want to get like a true red. So... Yeah. And then I got a set of six primaries and I ended up mixing my own uh, orange, brown, and purple. And so I got all the colors that I need now. Um, I don't really need a bunch of gouache because I'm pretty... I don't know. Blending it isn't so bad. It's pretty straightforward and easy. You know what I mean? The purple that I mixed with the blue and the red is like, look at this. Oh, I went too thick on it. It's really pretty though. I'm getting all dry brushy up in here. Let's see here. Let's focus. So that's what they look like on the paper. And right now I can tell you. Let me see if I can show you instead. Do you guys kind of see that? Um, you see that kind of is puffing out a little bit and warping a little bit. <sighs> let me try, let me try the big brush. Let me try. Uh, not mixing very well on there, I feel like. Oh, that's better. It's a lot better. Um, Woo! <laughs> wow, was that that's a strong one. Man, I bet you that one's hard to scrape. What what color is that? Dioxin violet. I don't know what the whole word for it is. See, it's not blending. And you can see right there, see bumps, bumps on the page. Um, which, honestly, even the mixed media watercolor stuff, I put so much water on there, even that does this. I think that since I taped it down, it's helping a lot. Who knows what have been, what would have been without that. Let's see here. Let's see here.
not drying as fast as I thought, which is fine, because even the mixed media one. These are, this top row is done, that one's dry, um, the yellow is dry, the blue is dry, purple is almost completely dry, this one's totally dry, that has a little speck right there, and then you can see I mean, it's trying all right, actually. Um, but yeah, the thing is, it doesn't mix well on here, does it? I'm probably still, <laughs> probably still going to use this as a sketchbook. I'm just going to have to see. If I can get the colors to blend better whilst I'm doing this. Let me see. So I guess that this paper is a lot like this old onion skin over here, except I think I kind of like how this blended Yeah, see? I love that texture. I don't know. I like that look, too. Yeah, it warps a little bit, but I don't know. Maybe it adds a little artistic hoo-ha. I don't know. Pizzazz, whatever. I don't know. It's so thin, though. This is, like, so thin. You know what it's like, and I was watching another documentary about this, um, Japanese watercolor and Chinese watercolor, they paint on super thin rice, rice paper? I think rice paper. And their paper does this too, but um, eventually they like stretch it out, because I remember doing some of that in high school. But they stretch it out, and I mean, that's what they do their art on. And the guy <laughs> I was watching, he was uh, kind of criticizing watercolor in the U.S. because he's like, oh, you can wet and re-wet and re-wet your canvas and mix it around and fix different things. But with us, you lay the color down once and that's the end. Um, after it dries, it's over. And I was like, oof, okay, well, that's one way. And they're, they're bigger on the brush stroke itself, not so much of the colors or the paper or anything like that. They're very big on the brush stroke over there, um, which is a cool, too, you know. Man, I wish this would, wish this would dry faster. Oh, this is all almost dry. Oh, great. Let's do it with the dirty, wet finger. Let me see. Well, 
this comes off nicely at least. Nothing got torn. You just really want to see what the what the back looks like. I'm kind of glad it does this. It doesn't um, make the the color go so much. Well, no, it does. See? So I guess with this, you have to put light washes on there. Let them dry and then keep going. Otherwise, you're going to have a huge crinkly situation on your hands. Yeah, but I'm happy about this board situation. Because the other thing is I don't want the humidity from this going to the pages behind it and crinkling those prematurely before I even have a chance to get to them with paint. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm going to, this is a keeper for, for this kind of paper. This is definitely a keeper. And let's see here. Oh, wow. That's insane. Hold on. Let me let me show you guys. So the colors and stuff definitely, I mean, on top here, yeah. But here, I don't know, it's not really whatever. <laughs> it's not really coming through as much as the onion skin. Which is fine because that's like way more see through than this anyways. I could totally still paint on that. See? Like, that's a pretty big difference. Yeah, this this is definitely better than the onion skin. It doesn't crinkle as much as that either, I don't think. So, yeah. This is going to be it, you guys. This is my new, uh, my new sketchbook for the watercolor. It's going to be what it's going to be. This is for practicing and improving. If I want to do a nice little painting thing that I want to hang up, I'll have the mixed media, the XL, uh, can, cans and whatever mixed media um, paper, and I could just use that. Otherwise, I think this is good enough. Yeah. Good old stology. Let me see. What's today? It's July. Uh, today is Monday. Monday the 10th July Monday the 10th that's where we are where's number 10 over here yeah. but that's the thing about this it's very small which is fine because no one really cares about the date unless you're trying to figure out something you know I'll probably need to put pen on this actually. Uh, does that say it should? Yep. It should and it does. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, where's the thing? I, I don't know why. I really like the idea of painting on really thin paper and having a whole book of it and it's all super crinkly and I don't know. I'm excited about this. Um, and the size of it is so nice. That is cataloged for posterity's sake. There goes that. 
Um, really quick, this little nifty little container, you guys. I am loving this for keeping my brushes in and also, um, what is that? <laughs> I think that's paint. I don't know. Pencil, pen, uh, all my brushes can go in here. A little eyedropper for whatever. Um, I could put like a little sponge and stuff in here. This is, and the way it closes, I like this. So it's very easy to open and close. It's a, actually a container from Dollar Tree. It has um, pill boxes in here. I took the pill boxes out though, and I just use this container now. Um, I really like this. It's neat and nifty, and I like it. And is this dry yet? Not, not too into how long it's taken. Here's what I'm going to do. What? Bam, bam. Yeah, this is a really good size. It's a really good size. One page, you guys. Imagine the whole book being like, oh, I'm excited. I will keep you guys posted to the progress of this. Because I'm trying to get better at watercolor. I haven't done it in a really long time. And I'm trying to brush up on my skills and um, get better at it. So, yeah. I'm excited about this. You guys have a good one. Thanks for sticking in there. I know my videos are always pretty long. Um, but, yeah, thanks for always tuning in. And good luck to you guys in your pursuits of art and watercolor and what have you. And I hope my videos are helpful. Okay, till next time. See you later.